It is clear also to me this understanding through which any bodhisattva is called great being. The Lord. May clear, Subhuti, what you think now. Subhuti. Any bodhisattva is called great being, as being simply unattached to and uninvolved in any thought of enlightenment. Any thought of all knowledge. Any thought without outflows, any unequaled thoughts or any thought of equaling the unequaled, or thoughts as either shared or unshared by any of the disciples or Pratyeka Buddhas. Any thought of all knowledge is without outflows, and unincluded, in any empirical world. Dot. Respecting all knowledge, and regarding any thought which is without outflows and unincluded, one remains unattached and uninvolved. In coming to understand this as such, any bodhisattva comes to be styled as great being. Sariputra. For what reason is one unattached even to this thought, and uninvolved in such? Subhuti. As such, this is no thought. Sariputra. Is this thought which is no thought, something which is? Subhuti. Is here existing now, or can one apprehend in this state of absence of thought, either a here is or here is not? Sariputra. No, not even this. Subhuti. So. Dot. Dot. How can Venerable Sariputra ask, or even say, is such thought which is no thought, something which is? Sariputra. Well do you expound this, Subhuti, whom the Lord announces as foremost, as dwelling in peace. Here in the Venerable Purna, son of Maitriyani, says to the Lord, Great being, is one thus called, armed in great armor is such a being, one set out in this great vehicle, such is mounted on this great vehicle. This is why one comes to be styled as great being. Subhuti. How great is this which entitles one to be called, armed in great armor? The Lord. Here the Bodhisattva, the great being, thinks thus. Countless beings do I lead to nirvana, yet here is neither one leading to nirvana, nor any being led thus. However many beings one may lead to nirvana, yet neither has any being been led to nirvana, nor had any led others to it. As such is this true nature of dharmas, seeing this nature as such, is illusory. Subhuti, just as a clever magician, or magician's apprentice conjures up at these crossroads a great crowd of people and makes these vanish again. Dot, dot. What do you think, Subhuti, is anyone killed by anyone, or murdered, or destroyed, or made to vanish? Subhuti. No indeed, Lord. The Lord. Even Sura Bodhisattva, great being, leads countless beings to Nirvana, and yet not any being has been led to Nirvana, nor has one led others to it. Hearing this exposition without fear is a great thing which entitles this bodhisattva to be known as armed with the great armor. Subhuti. As I understand the meaning of the Lord's teaching, as certainly not armed with an armor this bodhisattva, this great being, is known. The Lord. So it is. As all knowledge is not made, not unmade, not affected. Such beings also for whose sake one is armed with great armor are not made, not unmade, not affected. Subhuti. So it is. For form, feeling, perception, impulse, consciousness, is neither bound nor freed. And such is true also of suchness of form, suchness of feeling, suchness of perception, suchness of impulse or suchness of consciousness. Purna. But what now is the form of which you say is neither bound nor freed, and what this suchness of form, etc.? Question mark. Subhuti. The form of any illusory being is neither bound nor freed. Suchness of form of an illusory being is neither bound nor freed. In reality it is not here at all, it is isolated, it is unproduced. This is the great armor, the great non-armor of a bodhisattva, a great being, armed as the great armor, set out in this great vehicle, mounted on the great vehicle. After these words the venerable Purna is silent. 5. The meaning of great vehicle. Subhuti. It is thus, O Lord, a bodhisattva, great being, is armed with great armor and is set out in the great vehicle, is mounted on the great vehicle. But what is this great vehicle? How does one know anyone thus set out in this great vehicle? Whence does it go forth and whither? Who or what being sets out in it? Where does it stand? Who or what being goes forth by means of this great vehicle? The Lord. 
Great vehicle is a synonym of immeasurableness. Immeasurable is infinite, and there's such no thing by which to determine any measurement either by name nor number, saying this is as such or this many. By means of perfections a bodhisattva sets out. From this triple world one goes forth. One sets out to where is no objective support whatsoever. Such is a bodhisattva, a great being going forth but not going forth to anywhere. Nor does one set out in this as one does not stand anywhere, yet stands on all knowledge by way of making a stand nowhere. And finally, by means of this great vehicle no one goes forth, no one has gone forth, no one will go forth. As neither of these dharmas exist, one going forth, and this by which one goes forth, neither can these be got at. Since any and all dharmas do not exist, what dharma could go forth by what dharma? It is thus Subhuti, a bodhisattva, a great being, is armed with great armor, and is mounted on the great vehicle. Subhuti. The Lord speaks of the great vehicle. Surpassing the world with its gods, beings and asuras, such a vehicle goes forth. It is the same as space, and exceedingly great. As in space, so in this vehicle is room for immeasurable and incalculable beings. Such is this great vehicle of the bodhisattvas, these great beings. One neither sees its coming, nor going, and its abiding as such, does not exist. Thus one cannot get at any beginning of this great vehicle, nor at any end, nor at any middle. Yet, such is self-identical everywhere. Thus, here of one speaks of a great vehicle. The Lord. Well said, Subhuti. So it is. It is thusly the great vehicle of the bodhisattvas, the great beings. Trained herein bodhisattvas reach all knowledge, have reached it, will reach it. Purna. This elder Subhuti, as asked about perfect wisdom, fancies the great vehicle as something which can be pointed out. Subhuti. Have I, O Lord, spoken of the great vehicle without transgressing against perfect wisdom? The Lord. You have. In agreement with perfect wisdom you point out the great vehicle. 6. Attainment. Subhuti. Through the Buddha's might, O Lord. Moreover, a bodhisattva setting out on this journey does not approach the goal of full bodhisattvahood from any beginning, nor any ending, nor from any middle either. Bodhisattvas are as boundless as form, feeling, perception, impulse and consciousness are boundless. One does not approach any idea such as a bodhisattva is form, etc. This also does not exist, and is not apprehended. Thus in each and every way neither do I get at any of the dharmas which constitute a bodhisattva, nor do I see any dharma, which the word bodhisattva, denotes. Perfect wisdom also is neither seen nor got at. All knowledge also neither is seen nor got at. As in each and every way these dharmas are neither seen nor apprehended, what dharma does one instruct and admonish, through what dharma, in what dharma? Buddha, bodhisattva, perfect wisdom, all these are mere words. What things, being such as these, denote is something uncreated? It is as with any self or notion hereof. Although we speak of a self, yet absolutely any self is something uncreated. Since herein all dharmas are without own being, what is form, etc., which cannot be seized, and which is something uncreated. Thus any fact such as all dharmas are without own being, dot, dot, is the same as any fact that these are uncreated. Yet non-creation of any and all dharmas differs from these dharmas. How do I instruct and admonish non-creation in perfect wisdom which is also non-creation? And yet, one cannot apprehend as other than uncreated all dharmas regardless whether these are thought of as constituting a Buddha, or a Bodhisattva, or one marching to enlightenment. If any Bodhisattva as